I have something really interesting for you today. This is a PISA Express video card from nothing other than Matrox and supposedly it is compatible with Windows 98. So of course I bought one. If this turns out to be true, well, it could be a game changer. We could use modern PISA Express systems, slot in one of these and enjoy our Windows 98 retro games. So let's dive in and check it out. Well, here's the card, let's have a closer look. It came in excellent condition and this is something I've noticed over the years with most Matrox cards. They always seem to be in very good condition. Usually they come out of boring OEM computers or workstations. There's a very large passive heatsink. There are push pins at the back. I did try removing them, but the heatsink is also attached with some glue, so I decided to leave it. There's no need to mess with something that works just fine. At the back we have two DVI ports, so this is a dual head card. They are DVI-I, so they carry also the VGA signal. You just need one of those DVI to VGA dongles. Here we can see the memory modules. There are two of them. And here we can see the part number, so let's find a PDF file. Here we go, 128 megabits of capacity. That means 16 megabytes. There are two chips on the card, so we have 32 megabytes of VRAM. In terms of clock speed, VC50 is what's written on the chips. So a maximum clock speed of up to 200 megahertz should be possible. Just underneath the heatsink is a very interesting chip. I can see a logo from Texas Instruments and we have a model number. Let's see if we can find a data sheet. Here we go, the TI-XIO 2000A is a PCI Express to PCI translation bridge. So that means in terms of performance, we can expect something closer to that of a PCI card. And it mentions here the PCI bus interface is 32-bit and can operate at either 33 or 66 megahertz. So in terms of performance, I think this will be roughly on the level of a yeah, G450 or G550 with PCI. I'm using Everest to have a look at the clock speeds. We can see the core is running at a 102 megahertz and the DDR memory is clocked at 153 megahertz connected with a 64-bit interface. Let's have a look at the test system. Well, for PCI Express, we're going with LGA775, of course. Their platform is so flexible. The motherboard is from Gigabyte. It's a GA G31M-S2L, a micro ADX board with the G31 chipset. DDR2 memory, LGA775. The processor today, well, we're going all out. It's the Core 2 Duo E8600 running at 3.33 gigahertz. We have PCI Express slots, one slot with one lane, another one with 16 lanes, and there are two PCI slots. The motherboard is quite retro friendly. We are still getting a floppy and an ID port. We have SATA, which is nice, so we can connect modern SSDs and SATA optical drives. At the back is everything we need. We have two PS2 ports, parallel and serial. There's VGA out, four USB 2 ports, Ethernet, and audio. For RAM, we have a 512 megabyte DDR2 module. In the BIOS, there's not too much to change. I'm loading the turbo defaults and then just disabling a few onboard resources that we don't need. For storage, we have a Western Digital Blue 500 gigabyte. This is way too large for Windows 98, so we will just create a smaller partition. I'm using an Asus SATA optical drive. This one comes in handy to install Windows 98. Whenever you're doing benchmarking, you should definitely use a sound card. I like using this one today, the Sound Blaster ODG 2 ZS. Beautiful looking sound card, sounds terrific. Look at those gold plated ports at the back and the drivers fully compatible with Windows 98. This video is brought to you by PCBWay, our long-term channel sponsor. It is your one-stop shop for printed circuit boards manufacturing, assembly, 3D printing and CNC machining. To order a PCB, click on the instant quote button 
upload your Gerber file, check the preview of the board and then customize the PCB specifications. Check the link in the video description for more information. Using Windows 98 quick install, we are up and running in no time. And now it's time to check out the drivers. I'm going straight to the latest driver version. The video card is not being detected by the driver, but that's not a big deal. I'm patching the INF file. You can use a diagnostic tool to get the PCI device ID and off we go. Driver is installed. We are up and running. If it has a BIOS chip, we will flash it. Matrox cards are a little bit known for having bit rot with the BIOS. So something I really like about Matrox, they still have all the legacy files available on their website. I downloaded these two files and we can see here there is support for the G550 PCI Express. Unfortunately, the installer only seems to work under Windows XP. So yes, you guessed it, I quickly came out with a new SSD, more RAM, installing Windows XP just to flash the BIOS. Here we go, we can see all the details on the screen and voila, we have the latest and greatest BIOS on our video card. Here we have incoming running. I can see two issues. Firstly, the average FPS is negative. This happens on processors that are too fast and also the FPS is locked to 60. So I'm using the PowerStrip utility to unlock VSync and now we are ready to run some benchmarks. 3 Mark 99 Max is first up. We're getting 4,529, not a bad start. This is GL Quake and this game runs pretty well. We're getting solid FPS in all the resolutions, but 1280 by 1024 is not supported for some reason. Quake 2 is a struggle, however, for this video card. We're getting below 60 FPS, even at 640 by 480. And the situation does not improve with Quake 3, only 34.4 FPS at 640 by 480. Draken is another game that is a little bit too demanding for this graphics card. 31.2 FPS is all that we're getting at 640 x 480. Power Slide runs a lot better. This is a direct 3D game. Look at that, 72.3 FPS at 640 x 480. Definitely playable. Tarok 2 is another game that runs well. Here we can run a little bit higher of a resolution. 800 by 600 and we're still getting 75.5 FPS. Earth 2150 has a built-in benchmark and unfortunately also around 30 FPS is all that we're getting. Let's have a look how much extra performance we're getting by dropping down to 16-bit colors. Well, a small performance boost in GL Quake of around 10%. And we can confirm the same with Power Slide. A small performance boost, nothing to write home about, so I believe you're better off just sticking with 32-bit colors. What about support for Table Fog? Let's start with Thief 2. Yeah, we have Fog working. Just make sure you enable it in the game options. Insane is another test, and yeah, we can see Fog working in the distance. This is looking good. And another good test is Shadow of the Empire. Here we go. Yes, fog is being rendered just fine. Palleted textures, however, is buggy. The driver has a tick box feature and the games also believe it's supported, but in Final Fantasy VIII, we are getting some render errors, but it's not a big deal. Only a handful of games use this feature in a meaningful way. And now let's test a few games. Blood Omen, A Legacy of Cain. I don't think I've showcased this game before. It's from 1996 by Crystal Dynamics. It's a top-down action adventure game. Reminds me of Zelda uh, in some weird way. And yeah, vampire themes. It's not really my cup of tea. You move around, you can attack, you can cast spells. There's a map. Never played this before. It runs okay, but I can see some visible tearing so i'm curious if this is how the game also ran back in the day disney's hercules from 1997 by disney interactive studios a jump and run game another genre that i'm not too good with i find these games really difficult to play and i can see a ton of screen tearing 
This game supports running in window mode or full screen mode, but both options give me that horrible screen tearing. Earth 2150, released in the year 2000 from Poland by Reality Pump. This is a game that got quite a few comments in a recent video and it's also one of the games I played a little bit longer with this computer. It's a very well made RTS game. Way more complex than Command and Conquer or Warcraft. It's got a few nifty uh, additions to it. The graphics are nice. 3D, you can zoom in and out and rotate. The weather changes are beautiful. Day, night, snow, and it really captures that feeling of a dying Earth. I enjoyed it. It seems to be very hard though. I haven't even managed to finish the tutorial yet. After a point, it stops holding your hand and then you're left to your own devices. And I think I need to research some more advanced weapons because I always die when confronting the enemy. Necrodome 1996 by Raven Software. It's not a racing game. It seems to be some sort of a FPS game with a vehicle, capture the flag type game. It really didn't click with me. The graphics remind me of a DOS game and I just didn't enjoy this one. Have a Nice Day, released in 1997 by Synthetic. Seems to be a German developer. It's a racing game, but there's more to it. You can spend money, upgrade your car. There's some repairing going on. I need to spend a bit more time on this one. Power Slide, released in 1998 by Ratback Games from Australia. This is a game we showcased recently in more detail on the channel and it has a built-in benchmark, so it's now part of my benchmarking portfolio. And yeah, it's a really slick racing game with not much depth to it. It's hard, so it's pure racing without any of the other fluff that many other games have. We have some pinball games. Pro Pinball Big Race USA from 1998 by Cunning Development. Beautiful looking game, running at 1024 by 768. It's smooth, very slick controls, good music and sound, and I'm really liking this one. I also checked out the next one, which is called Fantastic Journey from 1999. It's just as good. If you like pinball or flipper games, I think these two games are really recommended. And here we have Total Annihilation from 1997 by Cave Dog Entertainment. I love this game, it's always fun testing it. We're running this one at 720p for a change. It's supported, the Matrox card has that resolution in the driver. And I would say this is maybe my favorite RTS game. It is so slick and still to this day, heaps of fun. So let me summarize my thoughts of this video card. It's not the benchmarking performance beast that some of you might have been hoping for because of the PCI Express interface. It really performs on the level of a PCI video card because of that bridge chip. It would have been nice to see a bridge chip converting PCI Express to HEP, but unfortunately that's not the case. So performance is average. All the games will work perfectly fine, like GL Quake and Power Slide, Tarok 2, those type of games. But if you're playing Quake 3 and Draken, then the performance will be a little bit disappointed. Much better is the compatibility compared to video cards from NVIDIA with PCI Express, for example. Here we need to use a very new driver that breaks compatibility with some games. The Matrix drivers work really well. All the games are tested, worked. And we also have working table fog. This is something, for example, the ATR Radeon PCI Express cards cannot display correctly. So all in all, this video card opens new doors, new possibilities of using PCI Express based systems to run Windows 98 retro games. Prices should also be fairly low. And once again, it's one of those products where you should focus on the games that do work and not stress too much about those more modern games that struggle a little bit. If you focus on the games that work, there are hundreds of games that will work beautifully on this video card and you will have a blast playing them. I fully understand that many of you insist on period correct hardware, but also there's a huge following out there that likes the time machine approach using more modern parts, giving you 
modern conveniences and this video card fits that little niche perfectly. So there you go, the PCI Express G450 from Matrox. What do you think about this video card? What is your take on Matrox in general? And have you tried Windows 98 with PCI Express? What parts did you end up using? And that's it from me. I'm looking forward to reading your comments Saturday morning with a cup of coffee. I can't wait. See you soon in another video.